Hey everybody, welcome to episode 65. We are still here at the Pokemon World Tournament for probably just one more episode and then I might take a break and do the Pokemon League. But we still have some gym leaders to defeat, starting with the Kanto gym leaders. Which of course we had some trouble with a couple episodes ago, so let's give it another try and see how we do. Um, last time I think the team of Nim, Russ, and Ulton went pretty well. So let's go for that again. And we'll make Alton Nim's Disguise. And if this doesn't work, we might... Um, what is this? Spoilers Tournament? Oh, she's just telling us that, okay. So when we beat all the different Gym Leaders Tournaments, we can open up the World Leaders Tournament. So we already knew that, and we'll be getting that hopefully very soon. I'm trying to figure out who we have missing here. I, I haven't actually seen Koki yet, I guess, because he's part of the Elite Four. They just do... J9 instead. Janine. I, it's Janine. I, I knew that. Um, as a kid growing up, I always read it as J9, so it's still stuck in my head that way. But I do know it's Janine. I, I think I connected that when I did my Heart Gold playthrough. But I apologize if uh, you were hearing that in previous episodes going, what is he talking about? <laughs> you know, Janine and Broke and Meisty, all the, all the gym leaders. Arika. All right, by the plume. Now, at the risk of jinxing it, this is probably a good matchup for us because we have a dragon and a flying type, um, and we start against a poison type who is weak to fire. I don't remember if by the plume has um, whatever the berry is for fire resistance, but hopefully not. Sleep powder is a hit. Oh, that's so annoying. Sleep moves are just really, really frustrating. There's a reason there's a sleep clause in most competitive battling that says only one Pokemon can be asleep at a time. At least by enemy attacks. Um, Alright, well, I guess we'll stay in and try to wake up and do more damage. And looks like Violet Plume is going to try to heal its HP, which is fine by me because we can always take it back down again. In uh, high stakes battles like these, putting an opponent to sleep is almost as good as making them faint. Not quite, but almost. And even though we're Dragon Type and Resist Pedal Dance, in theory, uh, Violet Plume still decided to go for it. And because we are not actually a Dragon Type, we don't resist it. So that worked out pretty well for Violet Plume, actually. Um, well, we know that Violet Plume is locked into Pedal Dance. So perhaps we'll lock ourselves into our own move. I don't think there are any, like... Well, there is Ferrothorn. It doesn't feel like she'd have a Ther Ferrothorn. Let's go for it. Because there aren't really many grass Pokemon that would resist Outrage. Now, I guess I could have probably saved it for like a Tangrowth. So maybe I should have used Dragon Claw and used the gem there and saved uh, save more Outrages for other Pokemon. But, all right, Victor Bell. Not too scared of Victor Bell. It is faster, though. So hopefully this Outrage takes it out. Otherwise, if it knows like um, Power Whip and Gunk Shot? I'm not sure what a good physical poison attack would be. Luckily we got a crit there and knocked it out, although I'm not sure the crit really made a difference there. Outrage is pretty powerful regardless, and this would be a good time to have um, Outrage. But we do have a flying attack in the back, so I think I'm going to actually stay in and risk the coin flip for confusion. Alright, thankfully we won the coin flip. But again, not really sure it mattered too much. We could always bring in Rust, and I think Acrobatics would knock it out in one hit. But what is this? Okay, Citrus Berry I'll take. I was worried it was the um, the plus speed berry. Light Screen doesn't really matter to us because we have two physical attackers left. And light Screen only increases the special defense. And thankfully, Alton is no longer confused. Also, I did look it up. And if your Outrage gets interrupted by like, Protect or being put to sleep or anything like that, your Pokemon does not become confused. It only becomes confused in later gens if it gets interrupted on the turn you would become confused anyway. So that's kind of cool. All right, one down and two to go. Let's hope we can keep up this winning streak. So it looks like it's gonna be Misty or Janine. I'm hoping Janine. Let's see. Yes, okay. And against these four, well, these are all gonna be tough. I think uh, Sabrina definitely would be my preference. So I'm glad she made it to the next round. Hopefully she can beat Giovanni. Because we have a dark type, so I feel like that would be a huge advantage. But we'll see. The 
Poisonous Ninja Master. Here they are. Do your best. Always do. Make mistakes sometimes, but in a, in a way that's my best, I suppose. All right, so we do have a couple ground moves on our team. We should be good against a Fever Pokemon. She might have a Weezing or some Poison Bug types. But then if it's Bug type, we have some Flying and Fire attacks. So all in all, I am pretty optimistic, but I don't want to get overconfident here either. Once again, a Pokemon weak to Extra Sensory and Flamethrower. Let's go for Flamethrower. Venom oh, this is bad. That's just kind of bad luck there. Because Venomoth thought it was doing neutral damage and did super effective damage. I guess I should have had Russ as the disguise, but, you know, there's no way of knowing who you're going to face. So that's certainly unfortunate. Um, let's bring in Alton next. That Venomoth is actually pretty fast, but we can probably survive a Bug Buzz and retaliate. Um, I really don't think Venomoth can survive a a Dragon Claw with Dragon Gem from Haxorus. Venomoth just isn't that strong. And we did survive, got a crit. I would have been a little bit worried if it had a crit there. That could have been very, very bad for us. All right. So hopefully she doesn't have any Pokemon that resist flying attacks. Crobat. Crobat is very fast, which can make it very dangerous if it has, like, Confuser A. Um, it could be a good idea to switch here. Because if Crobat uses, like, you know, a Cross Poison or something, it would be not very effective against Rust. But then Rust would have to take two Cross Poisons, which I think he could, but in case it's a Confuse Ray or something, I just I don't want to risk it. Heat Wave. Interesting choice. Um, all right. Oh, a burn. That's unlucky. That, that'll cut our attack stat in half. This will still do a ton of damage, but now Crobat... Yeah, Crobat will survive. And what does it have? Citrus Berry? Interesting. Crobat's not a very bulky Pokemon. Kind of a weird choice for a Citrus Berry. Um, that burn is really unfortunate because I would have like, just knocked it out. It's funny too because Heat Wave is not very effective. I'm not sure why Crobat used Heat Wave unless it only has like... I don't know. I feel like if it had like Fly or Cross Poison or Aerial Ace or something else damaging. Alright, well, that didn't go great. I think Heat Wave does have like a 30% chance. Um, we could use Acrobatics and save sorry we could use stone edge and save acrobatics for her last pokemon um it really depends on who it is but it could be like a wheezing or something i'm gonna risk this and if we miss we're in a lot of trouble although she missed too so we actually probably would have been okay then but stone edge should definitely take out crobat and that means we still have our flying gem for her last pokemon and tentacruel okay um so we do have Earthquake, which is super effective, so that's 200 base damage. Acrobatics is 110, though, plus 1.5, or times 1.5 because of Stab, and then another 1.5 because of our Flying Gem. So at least on the first use, Acrobatics will be more effective. Unfortunately, Tentacruel is faster. I think it actually is surprisingly fast, like 100 base speed. And um, Barrier doubles its defense, so that's actually very bad for us, because if we take like one Surf from the Tentacruel, that could be a lot of damage. That was actually more damage than I thought after the barrier. Unfortunately, it now has... Okay, special defense, that's actually fine. So let's finish up with Earthquake. Now the question is, can we survive this Scald? It's going to be close. Come on, Russ, hang in there, hang in there. Yes, okay, good. Even Surf, I think we would have survived, because Tentacruel is more of a defensive Pokemon than an offensive Pokemon. But it's not bad. It's another one of those bulky water types that I was mentioning. Um, so thankfully, it didn't crit or anything, and we were able to pull through. All right, one more to go. And I really hope it's Sabrina, although I'm pretty sure Sabrina has beat us before. But we might not have this team with us, or we might have just made some bad decisions or got bad luck. I don't remember what happened, but I feel like I could beat her more easily than Giovanni. Oh, but Giovanni is the victor, so we'll have to do our best. Now, he does have Rhyperior, which is uh, tough. Because, oh, yeah, I don't have any grass or water moves on this team. So Giovanni's one that I have to just hope I don't face, um, or hope we get some luck against. So I know he's going to leave with Rhyperior. Could use Focus Blast for super effective damage, but I'm pretty sure he has Solid Rock. 
Um, or he might just have one of the two random abilities. He might have like Lightning Rod. I'm not sure if it's randomized, but I'm going to assume it's Solid Rock. Uh, I don't want to like overthink this. So I think going for Night Days and having him potentially miss is probably the best the best way to go here. I could switch, but I don't really see a benefit to that. Nothing really wants to take a strong rock attack from Hyperior. So let's hope maybe we can get that accuracy drop and that it will do well for us. In some ways, Dark Pulse might be more useful because of its flinch chance, but this is just such a unique move. That's right, this is what happened last time too. He used Hammer Arm for whatever reason. Um, and it's almost like he knew I was a dark type, even though I, I don't think he has any way of really knowing. Um, all right, let's bring in 187 and 202. All right, I don't really want to do this, but I'm going to do it anyway. Um, I think both earthquakes will knock it out, but I just I know Rhyperior has a very strong defense stat. And because of its solid rock ability, presumably, um, this is only like slightly super effective, like 1.3 multiplier, 1.33 instead of 2. Alright, Marowak. Marowak is pretty slow from what I recall. So let's see if we can take it out with Acrobatics. It does have a decent defense stat, I think. But we also have a very high attack stat, so... Alright, yes. I don't want to take anything for granted in these battles, because you never know, but... Marowak is one that I'm, I'm pretty pretty happy about. Okay, so... I think the only risk here is if Golem uses something like Rock Polish. Otherwise, we should be in good shape because we have two Pokemon both with Earthquake who are both faster than him. So, please don't use Rock Polish. Stealth Rock. Okay, fine. That's it. We've, we've won and we finally beat Kanto. I guess taking a little break and doing the other gym leaders gave us the luck we needed. I think it's really just a matter of getting you know, three good battles in a row, which you know, I've been winning most of these. I don't know if the percentage is if you add them up, but I feel like it's probably about three out of four. It's just a matter of making sure that those three are in a row um, and not broken up between tournaments. And we finally did. And just like that, we have unlocked the World Tournament, which is cool because it draws gym leaders from all five of the regions as of this game. So now we'll have a really fun mix here. Now we do need to beat that 10 times in order to unlock the Champions Tournament, which will be super cool and also super tough. That'll be kind of our, our final challenge here. There's also some um, some of the random ones too that we did earlier, but I'm not sure I'll do those again. I think we've probably played enough of the World Tournament, or enough of the uh, yeah, Pokemon World Tournament. So let's do single battle and I'm gonna be. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna be a little risky again. Actually, you know what? Let's do Asper first. And we're gonna do the grass, water, fire combination again, just to give them some screen time. And if this doesn't go well, then I'll stick to using kind of our most powerful three, and maybe I'll mix in Basa or even even Asper a little bit, but. I think I'll mainly stick with the other three. All right, quite an array here. We haven't faced a few of these trainers yet. And I didn't see who we were up against first. It is going to be a rock type user, Roark, from the uh, Sinnoh region. First gym leader of Sinnoh. It took me a second because three of the five regions have rock type leaders first. And I always get him and um, Roxy from Hoenn confused a little bit. Alright, I'm sure he's going to have, yep, Rampardos, because Cranidos is his signature Pokemon in the games, and I think in uh, in the games where he does have rematches, um, which I think are Platinum and um, the remakes, he does have a Rampardos. So that's pretty good. Uh, I don't think Rampardos has Sturdy, actually. So let's see how much Horn Leech does. It's, it's a very strong Pokemon. Um, wow, that was lucky, because it has a very high attack stat. So that, that uh, Stone Edge would have done a lot of damage. It might have even taken us out. Um, Rampardos is kind of like Haxorus in that regard. It might even have a higher attack stat, I can't remember now. But thankfully it's slow and its other stats are not like super remarkable. Another Golem, just faced one of those. 
If it has sturdy, this will probably bring it down to sturdy range, being four times super effective. No, again, I guess these Pokemon just have very high defense stats. That's actually kind of shocking. It must have defense EVs as well. And a critical hit. Well, that's fair, because Stone Edge does have a high crit ratio, and hey, he missed the first one, got curled in the second. I'll consider that pretty balanced. But this actually seems like a great fight for Flo. Oh, you know what? I kind of wish I'd used Rain Dance then. Ah. And I, could, I wish I'd used Earthquakes. I forgot that I had the Water Gem. I would have rather had the Speed going into the next battle, the next Pokemon, and also had the, uh, the damage boost there. All right, well, we do have Earthquake, which is super effective. Ooh, it's absorbing life for a Solar Beam. I was expecting, like, a uh, Shell Smash there. Oh, no, it's got Power Herb. I was about to say, okay, we have a whole turn to switch out then. But we don't. Wow, what are the chances the Crustle would know a Grass Attack? I was not expecting that. All right. Ooh, okay, this could be this could be okay. I was going to say this could be bad, because we're a Fire-type, and Fire's weak to Rock. But we're also fighting. And fighting is resistant to rock, so that evens out. Uh, unfortunately, because of Kressel's types, um, it is not weak to either fire or fighting either. So we're kind of we kind of balance each other out. Um, in fact, it's not weak to any of our attacks. So the question is just: Do I go for Flare Blitz or do I go for Super Power? Um, we're holding the Expert Belts, so we don't get any damage bonus from either of them. You know what? I'm gonna say that because. Because he attacked me with Solar Beam, he's probably a... a oh, no. Um, I was say he's probably a rare special attacking Crustle. But luckily, Crustle is faster. I don't understand how. Because Crustle like, is very fast. But this one is. So that's actually good for us. Because if we had attacked it, and then it used Shell Smash, it would have been faster, and the lower defense wouldn't matter. Because we would have attacked it before. Oh, it still didn't matter. I was thinking with the lower defense stat, it's got to be um, a one-hit knockout. But it must have a lot of defense CVs, because... It held in there, so... Rock Slide... Oh, come on, boss, Bossa, hang in there. No, just with the, the power-up, that's too much damage. Alright, we gave it a try. Good start, but just... That, that's... You know, I guess Rock... I guess um, Shell Smash powers up your attack and your special attack, so it's still useful for a special Crustle, but I didn't know you could even make a viable Crustle that could use special attacks, so that that's new. But let's go, let's do this. Let's do one more challenge. Or at least one more. And I think we'll do... Let's do Bossa, Russ, and Ulton. A little bit rock weak, I think, here. Kind of water weak a little bit, too. Hmm. Let's just go for it. And we'll see how this does. Because a lot of this is just luck anyway. You can only pick three Pokemon unless you have a team that's like specifically designed for a three team, a three Pokemon battle fight. Then it's hard to get like good type coverage against like every single type. Especially when you only have max 12 attack moves between your team. And Gardenia, a grass type. Okay, that should be pretty good. We have a flying type, a dragon type, and a, a fire type. So. You know, we, we could uh, make some mistakes here, get really unlucky, but my gut instinct is that this first fight should be pretty easy. Now, Roserade is pretty strong, but Vasa is pretty strong as well. And we're going to take no chances, we're going to go right for Flare Blitz. Sledge Bomb is a lot of damage, Roserade is a strong special attacker. Trained one of those in Alpha Sapphire. And we're going to hope that we can survive with this Flare Blitz to at least see what our next Pokemon is. I think we probably should be able to, because Rosary doesn't have a huge HP stat. Yeah, 22 HP, just enough. Torterra, not a super fast Pokemon, but then again, neither is Embor, so... Let's see who's faster. We are faster, that's amazing. Because now we can do a ton of damage to this Torterra before we faint. And I'm pretty sure we're going to knock ourselves out here, but hey, we knocked out Torterra, I did not expect that. But Expert Bell, I think, really made the difference there. Alright, good job, Basta. Took out two or three Pokemon. I'm just going to bring in Russ. I'm a little worried that whatever she brings in might have like a stat boosting move. So, yeah, we're just going to bring in Russ. We're going to go for acrobatics, and that should be it. That's four times super effective. Stab and flying gem. Unless it has like a focus sash. This should be it. And 
Guess what it has? A focus sash. That's unfortunate. Um, will this be a knockout? Probably. I think Braylon does have... Wow, okay, so that's surprising. Braylon does actually have a pretty good attack stat. Oh, and it has Mock Punch. Okay, well, I'm glad this is not our last Pokemon. Um, so now we can bring in Ulton, and I don't think Breloom is that fast. So, in fact, I know it's not that fast, but again, it might have speed EVs, so I don't want to take anything for granted. But even if it's... I don't think there's any way it can knock us out in uh, in one hit. It is faster. Oh, please don't crit. Stone Edge can crit, so please don't crit. Please don't crit. Okay, it didn't. And actually, I think a crit would have been close, but... Not a knockout anyway, thankfully. This is definitely overkill for taking out one HP, but there it is. I didn't use Outrage. I don't know why I didn't use Outrage. It just felt like overkill. We'll save that for the next one. All right. A great victory with one Pokemon left indeed. That Prelim is a little bit scary. It's cool that by this generation, there are so many strong Pokemon from every single type that even though there are different gym leaders of the same type, like Erica and Gardenia, they have, I don't know if they have fully unique teams, but they have almost unique teams. All right, and we have, okay, Chili and Cress. So, Cry oh, Cress is a water type user. That's not good. Hopefully he has like his Basculin and some other weak ones. He did have, I think, oh, Loma Low, that, that, I'd be okay with that too. Uh, that is unfortunate though, because like I was saying, this team is, is a little bit water weak. Let's see what we can do. What incredible luck for you. Yeah, I don't know about that. All right, of course he leads with Simapore. And, hmm. <laughs> I mean, this could be bad, because Simapore is frail, but it is fast. So it might just outspeed my team and no like Surf and Ice Beam, and that could be the game right there. Um, I could switch into Ulton to take the Surf. I am worried Simapur has Ice Beam. I think, you know, I'm gonna hope it does something silly like uses Work Up or Nasty Plot, and I'm just gonna go straight for the Wild Charge. Hydro Pump, come on, miss. It didn't miss. I think Hydro Pump is 80% accurate, so the odds were not in our favor, but all right, boss has gone down. So now I just have to like really hope that uh, he doesn't have any ice attacks, which is hard because I, I feel like most of the is probably no ice attacks. Um, I'm going to use Dragon Claw because it should be more than enough. It should definitely be more than enough. Simapore has like no defenses. All right, Acrobatics. That'll be a lot of damage, but I think we can survive it. Yes. And that was a critical hit, too. That was unlucky. So that could really hurt us because if we had survived with more HP, that might have helped us in the next matchup here. All right, so it's 2v2, but unfortunately Ulton is hurt. Now, is Ulton faster than Samurott? Um, let's find out. We are, okay. So we can do a lot of damage with Outrage. I don't think it'll be a knockout because Samurott is pretty tough. And we don't have our Dragon Gem anymore. Megahorn, that's risky. That could have missed. He would have been in a lot of trouble if that had missed. All right, so here's my Dilemma now. Okay, what, what does Samurott have there? Leftovers. The question is, do I want to save my acrobatics with the gem for his next Pokemon? Or... Uh, so I I could use Earthquake. I'm just kind of looking at the Outrage there. The Outrage did... That was with the gem, too. No, it wasn't with the gem. So... Alright, let's think about this for a second here, because this could really make the battle. So Outrage is a 120 base power move, with Stab is 180. So it did about 180 with two-thirds of his attack. This is a 100 base power move, so it should do at least a third of his health. And it looks like he's probably about a third. Plus, I think Russ has a few more attack points. I could use Stone Edge. Yeah, we're actually a decent, we're like 15 points higher, which is not bad. Um, we could use Stone Edge, which if it hits, will definitely knock out Samurott. Um, This is really tough. Let's use Earthquake and hope it's enough. Come on, Russ. Please be enough. Yes, it is, okay. My sort of visual math there is telling me it would be, but I'm sure it was close. And Seismitoad, okay, I'm, I'm glad that we saved 
acrobatics for sure, because what else would we have really used here? We are faster. I wasn't sure about that either. There's the flying gem. Now, with the flying gem, I want to say it'll be a knockout, but again, I don't want to count my chickens. Okay, it's a knockout. Whew. Good job, team. That was tough, but we managed to beat a water-type trainer. That was fun. I like that the trainers tend to use Pokemon from their regions, too. Not always. Um, but they sort of lean in that direction, which is cool, because it kind of gives the, the developers a reason to assign certain Pokemon. Because you could have given Crest, like, you know, Gyarados, Melata, Kingdra. That would have been a strong team. But um, sticking with mainly Pokemon from his region, I think, makes a lot of sense. All right, so now we're against... Oh, no, another water user. Ah, oh. Well, I guess Price wouldn't have been much better being a nice user. Um, we would have Basa, but... Our other true weak dice, so. Yeah, this team unfortunately shares a few common weaknesses. Alright, well. We won against Cress. Maybe we can win against Juan, too. Arguably the strongest Hoenn gym leader. Stepped in for his friend Wallace when Wallace became the champion in Emerald. Let's win while showing the elegance of Pokemon moves. He's also a uh, contest star, I believe. That's his other claim to fame. Alright, Juan. He does have a Kingdra. Yeah, it's his signature Pokemon. It's kind of weird. I feel like there are so many other cool water types. Like, I don't know. I don't know if Whale would be a good choice, but... Um, even, like, Gyarados probably would be a good choice. Like, how, would, how many trainers have Gyarados as their signature Pokemon? A lot of strong trainers have a Gyarados, but... Um, Alright, so again, I don't really want to switch into anything. Everybody's weak to Kingdra. Uh, let's go for Super Power. Another Hydro Pump and another hit. Yeah, that's not good. Kingdra is decently fast too. I feel like it has like base 90 speed or base 85. I think it's base 85. I think all of its stats are 95 except for health and um, speed, which are 85. I trained a Kingdra in Heart Gold and I love dragons. So that's the only reason I know that. But hopefully we're faster and can take it out with an Acrobatics. Okay, we are. So it's 2-2 two two now, but the big question is going to be, can we also take out his other Pokemon now that we're down our, our Flying Gem? Because if we can't, okay, Palitoad, and Palitoad usually has Drizzle, I think. This one does not. Not sure what he wants to do. He's a pure Water type. Let's go for Acrobatics. This will be a lot of damage even without the Flying Gem. But will it be a knockout? Not quite. Scald is not quite as strong as Surf, but it's still super effective. How much will it do? Ah, uh, it's a knockout. I was thinking we might not be, because I, I wasn't sure about Palatoad's special attack stat. I know Palatoad is not the highest stat Pokemon. Alright, so we're going to hope that we're faster and that it doesn't have Ice Beam. Well, I think Palatoad actually has a decent speed stat, I want to say. But we are faster. Okay, we, we have a chance. We are still in this. Um, I was saying something a second ago about something, but I don't know what it is. Okay, Wishcash is pretty slow. Now, it is pretty bulky, but we still have our Dragon Gem, so come on, Outrage, don't fail me now. It's my favorite move coming from a very strong Pokemon and holding a Dragon Gem. Come on, Ulton. Yes, okay, against the odds, we defeated two Water Trainers in a row. How's that for a fun battle? Yeah, I don't remember what I was saying there. So apologies. Talking about Kingdra, Kingdra stats. Yeah, I don't know. Oh, this is the uh, the signature Pokemon. It's weird that they made him have a signature Pokemon, have Kingdra as a signature Pokemon in Emerald, whereas one generation previously, Clara's signature Pokemon, also an eighth gym leader, was also Kingdra. So I feel like Gyarados was kind of the obvious choice. It's very strong, same stat total as Kingdra and Melodic, which was Wallace's best. Also three battle points for that. That's cool. Nice that the world tournament gives, or the world leader tournament gives a little bit more. Yep, after you win nine more times. So, um, I think what I'll probably do is do the Pokemon League next. Kind of take a break from Pokemon World Tournament, and then, um, and then we'll do some more world leader tournaments after we come back. Maybe I'll do some of them off screen. I'll have to kind of see how it goes. I don't want to do like ten episodes of world leader tournaments, but as long as we can still win a decent portion of them. Um, I guess I might as well record these, and then you guys can always skip them if you don't want to don't wanna watch. But anyway, for now, I think I need to train our team up to like one more level. Because I think the Pokemon League's Pokemon start at level 77. So I'll get our guys up to all 77 as well. Uh, I'll give them their old Hell items back. 
Um, by getting Asper 77, that should get his friendship all the way back up. And then, yeah, we should be ready for some more very fun, val very challenging fights. And finally, 6v6s, which, let's face it, they're always the most fun. Like, who watching the anime didn't love the big 6v6 Pokemon League matches? Not that 3v3 weren't cool, but there's something special about 6v6. But anyway, that is it for me for tonight. So as always, thank you very much for watching. Keep being awesome, and I'll see you again soon.